Welcome to the Glisten Podcast. You know, I meet amazing people all the time, and I think to myself, wow, you are so incredible. I think everybody should meet you. And so that's what this podcast is all about. I get to have these incredible conversations, and I want to share them with you because I believe they're either going to make you laugh, cry, be encouraged, really feel like maybe you're not all alone, that there's somebody out there that resonates with what you're going through, or maybe all of those things together. And that is my hope, that you'll be able to be inspired and encouraged and know that God sees you and that He loves you. Hey friends, welcome to the Glisten Podcast. I'm so glad that you chose to join us today. I think you're gonna really, really love this conversation. Those of you who are at Glisten Conference, you've already met her, but those of you who haven't, this is Pastor Maria Durso, and we, I'm so incredibly honored to have her this weekend at our conference, and then also when you see this podcast, you are just absolutely gonna fall in love with her. But here's the thing, she's a godmother to so many people, um, also, like people like Lisa Bevere, Andy Andrews, some of the people that I've read their books, like she's the, God, I call her the godmother of godmothers. <laughs> she's a mom, she's a grandmother, she's a pastor, she's an author, she's a speaker, um, and she is just, I think she's a legend. So I'm super honored to have her on the podcast, and we're going to dive in and talk today about prayer because she is a passionate prayer warrior, and I want to learn, and I know that you do too, so thank you so much for being here today. Pastor Charlotte, I love, I love being here. This church is amazing. Your people are amazing. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, I tell you what, I, I, I just told you this earlier. Um, I called my husband after I've talked to you the first time, after we had breakfast together, and I'm like, when you meet your heroes and you just hope that they'll be everything that you thought they would be, and I called him and I said, she's more. She's more than I thought she would be. I just love how you're so um, down to earth. You're easygoing. You're just personable and relatable, and you do. You, f- you immediately feel like I'm, I'm with my mom. Like wow. I am with thank somebody you. who loves me and cares about me. So thank you for being here, and thank you for ministering. Um, but I want to ask you, how did you get such a heart for prayer? What what happened, and why did you start? I mean, I heard I've heard that you had to have prayer meetings from ten o'clock at night to one o'clock in the morning. So, what is that all about? Talk to me about that. So, um, first of all, prayer is the secret sauce. Just so you know, if yes. anything good happens in church, it's because behind the scenes people are interceding. So, let me tell you my journey. Um, I came out of the Brooklyn Tabernacle, and through a circumstance, you know, through a series of events, I end up becoming the um, head of the youth. And at the time, this is going back to 1978, so it was very small, and um, I had to learn how to speak, to minister to them. And and after the meeting was over, it would be like 10 o'clock at night, these little old people would come and they would start to pray. Hmm. So 10 o'clock, they would pray for hours and hours, and they would say to me, Sister Maria, we're praying for you. And I used to say, ah, that's so nice, they're (laughs) praying. But you know, I'm speaking like, that's like the big, Mm -hmm. you know, that's the big thing. So we end up uh, being given a church, and we become the first church that comes out of the Brooklyn Tabernacle. It was called Christ Tabernacle then, now it's Saints Church, because we just went through a transition and our youngest son took it over. So now, you know, we're pastoring this church, small. And I noticed that when my husband was speaking or the choir was singing, the little bit that we had, it was good, but there was like no force behind the words, like whatever was being done, like just went off the platform and it didn't have like this real penetration. So the first year, um, it was a January, uh, it was New Year's Day and I'm pulling in my driveway and I hear the Holy Spirit say, I'm gonna make you an intercessor. Hmm. I said, me, an intercessor? I mean, truth be told, like, I really can't pray like more than five minutes straight (laughs) because I'm OCD. If I see a piece of lint on the floor, I'm vacuuming the whole house. (laughs) Then I'm remembering, wait, did I get the mail? (gasps) 
did I take that out to prepare for dinner tonight? You know, so I go in my house and I have this huge clock in my kitchen. And the Holy Spirit uh, prompted me to look at this clock. And he says, you see that clock? He says, nobody buys the clock because of the mechanism. Hmm. They buy it because of the size, the shape, the color, the way the numbers are set, Roman numerals. However, mm -hmm. he says, but nobody buys the clock because of that mechanism. He says, but without that mechanism, that clock would be useless. Hmm. And he said, that's what prayer is to the church. Wow. Then he gave me another example. He said, no one buys a house because of the boiler room. Nobody says, ooh, what a boiler room. Or look at the clock, ooh, what a mechanism. I gotta have that clock, look at that mechanism. <laughs> and he said, but when everything gets cold in the mm -hmm. house, the first place you look for is the boiler room. And he says, and that's what the mm. intercessory prayer is to the church. It's the boiler room. Mm. It heats up the church so that when the service is going on, people feel comfortable to take their coat off, to relax, to feel at home. Mm. And then he showed me, I don't know if you have boilers in um, Georgia, but we have boilers in New York. And the boiler, there's three things to keep it running. Number one, there always has to be fresh water flowing through the tube of the boiler. There has to be a fire underneath the tube, mm -hmm. and there has to be fresh supplies of oil. And he said, you need the water of the word when you're praying, running through. You need fire underneath that, heating up those prayers, and you need fresh supplies of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that started me on a journey to pray. And if you know anything about prayer, which I know you do, we join together, we start to pray, the enemy is right there. Mm -hmm. And the enemy wants to put a cap on your prayers. And you feel for a season, those prayers are not going past the ceiling. And we would just pray. We were praying for a youth ministry. Our youth ministry was okay. You know, we were having pizza and bowling. But, you know, the Bible tells us that our sons and daughters, they're going to prophesy. They're going to see visions. So I believe that youth ministry yeah. is far more than that. There's no junior Holy Spirit. Yeah. And uh, we started to pray, and the enemy would always say, that's not for you. That's not for your little church. That's not going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. And I would tell the people that were praying with me, don't give up. I know it seems like we can't break through, but one day God is going to open up the ceiling and all those prayers that we have prayed are going to open up and God's going to come down and bless us. And sure mm -hmm. enough, years later, the youth ministry that we were praying for, I never realized I was raising them, the youth leaders, right under my nose. And God has done amazing, amazing things. That is incredible. So you're planting all of those seeds, and now you're getting to see the, the harvest right. of all of that, of those prayers. I love that because we can't, we never can stop. Like, like when you think things are impossible, like when we think that, I don't know, God, I don't know how you're going to fix this situation, whether it's marriage, whether it's your kids being far from God, um, if it's, you know, sickness, an illness, a, a, situ a financial situation, it seems like it's never going to change or there's no way out of the situation. But but when people pray, things happen. Absolutely. So can you think of a time when you share an experience maybe that you have where yes. you saw God just completely come yes. through? Yes, yes. Well, um, number one, as you heard in my testimony, I'm an answer to prayer. I was in a hotel yes. room in Mexico living with my boyfriend, and I decide one night I'm going to talk to God. But I don't talk to him the way... We talked to him now. I was cursing him out. I was doing drugs from the age of 10 to 25. I've been arrested. I've tried to commit suicide. I've been hit by a car. My mother was five mm -hmm. months pregnant with me, went into a coma and died. And, you know, all of my past just made me very bitter against God. I thought God had it out for me. Mm -hmm. So this night I'm in this hotel room and I'm talking to God and I'm cursing him out and shaking my fist. and. In the midst of this tirade, this holy God says my name. Now you heard the story, my name's not on my birth certificate, mm -hmm. 
My name is Baby. I came born into a world, it was very traumatic, you know, and God knew my name, but it wasn't audible. It was internal. Mm -hmm. And it was like whatever I was looking for, because here I am, I'm in this hotel room. I have all the money in the world. I have the man of my dreams. I have designer luggage. I have humongous diamond earrings. I have more chains than the rappers. <laughs> but I'm empty. Yeah. And he says the name Maria. And I hear this voice say internally, Give me your life before it's too late. Mm -hmm. And I have this experience. I have instant conviction of sin. And we have five more days to this 10-day vacation, and I shut everything down. The shop was shut down. No more drugs. No more dancing, clubbing, drinking, nothing. I wanted to go and find the voice. But I never heard of being born again. I... I didn't know you can have a relationship with God. So we go home and we had just moved in together. We had two mattresses on the floor and a telephone. And I call a friend of mine. Now, all my friends were crazy people just like me because birds of a feather, yes. right? I didn't know there was such a thing called a Christian. Imagine that. So um, I call my friend and I said, Barbara, I got to talk to you. And she says, no, I got to talk to you. We go back and forth. And I think she's going to tell me about some new drug spot. And uh, she says, hurry up. And I said, Barbara, I need God in my life. And Barbara says, praise the Lord. I said, praise the who? <laughs> she said, praise the Lord. She said, Maria, while well, you were gone, some hippie preached the gospel to her and 30 of our friends. They, they accepted Christ. They held hands and said, Lord, save Michael and Maria in Mexico. Guess what night that was? Mm -hmm. The night that voice spoke to me thousands of miles away. That's why we never should stop praying because our prayers go where we can go. Yeah. And God is never not working. He answers prayer. So we cannot give up mm -hmm. praying. And she took us to church that night. That was September 1975. And we gave our life to Christ. And we, don't, we not only gave him our life, we gave him our whole life, mm -hmm. not the part that needed a little fixing up but our whole life. And he gave us back a whole life. And it is amazing what the Lord has done. But I could also tell you praying for my kids. Mm. You know, um, I was in my kitchen and I had three, I have three sons now. They're all pastors and they're amazing. But uh, I was reading my Bible from the book of Hebrews and it says, and Christ is the head of of his house, and we are his house. And then I heard the Holy Spirit say, and my house shall be called a house of prayer. Wow. But you've made it a den of thieves. I was like, what? I'm the head of the prayer ministry, don't you know? <laughs> like, Holy Spirit, you definitely got the wrong address. And he says, no. He says, you're saying nice mother's prayers mm -hmm. for your children. He said, you're trying to put out a nuclear war with a BB gun. You need to go to war. You need to pray and fast, a life for a life. Mm -hmm. Stop saying nice mother's prayer. Stop saying, they're good boys. No, they're not. It's just a phase. No, it's not. Go to war. And you know, something happened to me that day, which I really feel will help your audience because I, I, I remember saying to God, you know, Lord, I guess I would, I don't really believe you would save my sons. Mm -hmm. You know, when you come from a background like me, you feel like you're lucky you're saved. Even though God is using me and, and, and whatever, and our church is growing, you just have this thing that anything attached to you isn't as important. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, I said, God, you know what? I would pray and fast, but I really don't believe you would save my sons. Hmm. First time I admitted that. I said, I believe you saved Billy Graham's son because that's Billy Graham. 
and you save this one's daughter because that's, mm -hmm. but I don't really believe you would save my sons. I have this epiphany. I remember where I was standing in my dining room and the thought came to me, faith isn't a fruit of the spirit. In other words, I don't have to say the right prayer in the three right order in order for God mm -hmm. to answer it. Faith is a gift of God, right? Faith yes. is a gift, it's not a fruit. And if I don't have the gift of faith, guess what? I can't pretend I have it. I can't pray like I have it mm -hmm. because God smells faith. Yeah. The prayer of faith, the prayer of faith, when we say help, and it's by faith, it's like heaven's nostrils open up and the, you know, he just says, yes, they need me, they love me, they're calling on me. Mm -hmm. It's not a Gehazi prayer where he went in the room and he laid his hand on the boy, the staff on the boy, and he did the right things, but nothing happened. It's an Elisha prayer. Yeah. Elisha went in that room and he was like, he wasn't taking no for an answer. And he got on top of that boy and he, you know, he went mouth to mouth and eye to eye and hand to hand and heart to heart. And the Bible says that that boy started to grow warm, but Elisha got back up. He walked around that room again with the door shut. He shut out doubt. He got back on that boy and then the boy sneezed seven times because he doesn't quit at warm. Mm -hmm. You get up when the deed is done. Amen. You know, so I realized that faith is a gift of God. And I said, God, for the first time I realized here I am, the head of the intercessory prayer. I need the gift of faith. Mm -hmm. And God, I have to go to the giver of the gift. You need to give me faith, God, faith to believe. And I promise you that day from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, something happened to me and my whole perspective changed. And I knew that I knew that God was going to answer. And he had me pray and fast for nine months. And I didn't pray nice mother's prayers anymore. I prayed like I went to war. I went to church. I got a piece of oak tag. I put, we put a bullseye, the prayer team. We started to intercede. And I am telling you, God started to expose our kids. My son would come home with that backpack with a hundred zippers, and I'd say, excuse me, I gotta look in that zipper. Mm -hmm. And I would find a, but see now, my weapons were no longer nagging. Mm -hmm. Self-pity, guilt, condemnation. <laughs> Honey, the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. So when I found that, I'd say, oh, you have a good night now. See, because I no longer had to yell at them because I was crying out to God. Oh, there so was good. an exchange. And one by one, God saved them and miraculously did something so divine that a whole revival started on, um, with the youth on the Northeast. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible, I love it. It's in Hannah. And you know, year after year, Hannah was tormented by mm -hmm. Penina. Penina had children. Hannah had none, mm -hmm. and she was tormented, and she went, the, she went home the same way she came, year after year, discouraged. But one, 1 Samuel 1, 9b, ladies, if you remember anything, remember this scripture. One day, Hannah stood up. One day, Hannah said, enough is enough. One day, Hannah changed her posture. One day, she, she pushed away from the table of discouragement and Penina became small and God became big. Mm -hmm. And she said, if God could do it for Sarah, if God could do it for Rachel, God could do it for me. And everything changed. And the Bible says she went into the tabernacle. Yeah. She went in, she broke protocol. Here she was year after year, a stone's throw away from the presence. And she leaves the same way. And that's like us. When we don't have faith, yeah. we come to church but we don't make real contact with God. Mm -hmm. But she broke through, and as soon as she went in, what happens? Eli the priest was sitting. And see, when leaders are sitting and they should be standing, yes. they misjudge people. But she, she was not gonna be denied. And she knew, she left. When she left, she had a feast. She had a feast before she got pregnant. Mm -hmm. She knew that she knew she was gonna receive from the only one that could give it to her. Yeah. And you know what? You don't have to be childless 
to no barrenness mm -hmm. because barrenness is any place in our life where there's the absence of God's intervention. Mm -hmm. And we can go to God, we can go in, and we can ask the Lord, and he will do it for us. He will do it yeah. for us. Amen. Yeah, the, the barrenness um, can come in so many different forms, but I do, there, there are so many women today. I, I heard from one this week, actually, um, who is really struggling with infertility. So I'm sure there's going to be someone watching this that is struggling. Would you just, just here right in the middle of this conversation, can we just pray Absolutely. for someone who's, who's desperately wanting a child and not able to have one? Right. Let's, let's just go for it. God, we thank you, Lord, because you're the God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly so much more than we can ask, think, or imagine. Did you not fill the barren womb of Elizabeth, God? At 88 years old, you filled the womb. You're the God that fills our womb. You filled a virgin's womb, oh God, because it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by your spirit, so God, we're asking. They're not asking for anything, oh God, that's unusual. You have created us to be nurturers and mothers, Lord. It is a desire that you've put inside of us. So God, would you not change their situation and do something, God, that would stun them and be a testimony to those around them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. I believe that's good. I believe people are going to watch this. It's going to be a point of contact and a, and a catalyst of faith. And they're going to say, hey, I watched that podcast. I received that prayer. I'm believing for amen. that child. In Jesus amen. Amen. And if they have a girl, they can maybe they can name her Faith. <laughs> <laughs> or Hannah. Or Hannah, yes. <laughs> yes, that's great. So when you were praying, so how, t talk to us about your prayer meetings at your church, because I know that you have prayer meetings. So talk to us about those. What does that consist of? How does that roll? Tell us how that operates. So for years, you know, our, we've always said that the prayer meeting is the most important meeting of the church. You know, a church that prays together stays together. Something happens in the prayer meeting that doesn't happen on a Sunday. Sundays are wonderful, but because of the time and, you know, getting people into the next service, you know, there's not that ability to wait and linger mm -hmm. just in the presence of the Lord. So the prayer meetings are more, I want to say, freestyle. So there's not really a a formula. Sometimes God comes in the beginning and we're just at the altar crying out to God. Sometimes, you know, there's a, an amazing sermon and that's what brings us to that place. But we're always at a place where we're praying and we're praying for one another. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, because the prayer meeting has been taken out of churches, you know, for whatever reason, we do small groups and, and we do small community groups and they're important. They are. So you kind of eliminated the prayer meeting because how many nights can people yeah. be committed and, and whatever. And, 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 all, and they're all good things, you know. But for my life, the most notable things that have ever been done, the marked things have happened in prayer meetings. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a sermon. It was like the contact with God that unearthed, yeah. unearthed all this maybe garbage in my heart, mm -hmm. maybe a place that I wasn't surrendering, maybe there was a revelation I needed. Whatever it was, it was that contact. Because there's something about the presence of the Lord. We were talking about this um, when we went to breakfast. Nobody, you know, there are great speakers. Sermons are amazing. We love sermons, right? Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. But you, you never say, oh, the presence of God again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just never say that because there's something about the presence. And when people leave the building, they're not saying, oh, what a singer, oh, what a preacher. They're presence. saying the presence. The Holy Spirit came and filled me mm -hmm. and changed me and emptied me and broke me and yeah. filled me. And, you know, it's, I, there's just nothing like it. And, you know, we just can't remove those old landmarks. Mm -hmm. 
you know, you can't change the word. Yes. The word's that. the word. Mm -hmm. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word. And if Jesus had to pray, if Jesus went away and prayed, we, and we shouldn't make prayer like a scary thing. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus died basically to open up the curtain. He's like sitting here and he's saying, come on. Yeah. Come and have a conversation with me because I want to talk back to you. It's simple. Mm -hmm. So he went through all of that for us not to use that all access pass yeah. and go into his presence and have a conversation with him. And then there's just, I was starting to say before, because we've eliminated prayer, the new believer, they don't know how to pray. Mm -hmm. And so you, they need to know how to pray one for another. Yeah. So, you know, like in the prayer meetings, we may lay hands on people or lay hands on one another and just cry out to God for each yeah. other. And you pick up those burdens, but they're good burdens because it gets your mind off of you. Yeah. You know, and we could bring those situations to God and it's, it's just like it. it. I mean, there's nothing like it. You know that. Yeah, there's nothing like it. It's, it's even hard to explain even, but I know that, that I know there was a time in my life where where I didn't feel the presence of God. I wasn't I wasn't spending time with God and there's there's nothing like not being in the presence of Ooh. God either. It's the worst feeling. There's the such worst. a hopelessness. There's I mean, it was just a really dark time in my life. I was struggling with my faith and I just wasn't, you know, I was like is this real? Is this even real? And I just remember struggling so hard and not feeling the presence of God that I couldn't wait to get back into the presence of God because there's just, there's nothing like it. And there's nothing like Him. He just, He just makes you feel so loved and accepted. And whatever it is that you need, if you seek Him, what did He say? You, you draw near to me. I'm right. I I'm will right draw here. near to you. I am right here. I am right here. And yeah. so I think sometimes people are are confused about prayer. Maybe they think they have to say the right thing. They have to, they're, like you said, you have to, there's this special prayer that you have to learn and say it just like mm -hmm. this for it to work. But it's not the words. It's the, it's the faith. It's, it's the, the belief. faith. Yes. It's, it's the thing. faith behind the words. Yes. Because you could say a long liturgical prayer and it be dead. Mm -hmm. Like I believe when Elisha said to Gehazi, he gave him his staff. He says, go in that room, lay hand, lay the staff on the boy. And Gehazi comes back and he goes like, nothing happened. But see, Elisha goes in and he has faith. Yeah. So you could say, help, mm -hmm. but it's faith. And I think the enemy wants us to believe oh. that we can't trust God, that he doesn't have, he does, either he doesn't have our best interest at heart or he doesn't really care or, um, or he's not trustworthy. Like he's, he, he could do it for, like you said, he could do it for this person, he right. could do it for that person. We're the exception to the rule. We're yes. the exception. And I believe that most people feel that. Mm -hmm. You know, I have this sermon, and it's called All Access. And we were given this All Access Pass in a conference, and um, we were given a bag, a bracelet, and a badge, and it all said All Access. And uh, the host said to us, listen, this gives you All Access into the green room. And in this conference, the who's who of Christianity was there. Uh, we have reserved seats for you. So my husband and I, we never went into the green room. We stayed on the perimeter. We peeked inside. We watched other people have fellowship and rest, but we didn't. And we never sat in our seats. So the last day, the um, host says, they really want you to sit in your seats. So my husband and I were like dead men walking. Well, going down this long aisle like <laughs> doo, 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 doo. and when I get to my seat they have our names on the seat and mm. no one ever sat there all those days mm. because no one else was Michael and Maria Durso and there's an empty seat for many people and God is waiting to yeah. say come into so the woman when I go in she, I knew her I didn't I hadn't seen her there were thousands of people in, and she jumps up she says Maria Durso where have you been come and take your seat and I felt like the Holy Spirit was saying come and take your seat but see we have experiences mm. from our past yeah maybe there's father wounds or mother wounds and my father locked his bedroom door 
and I could never go and knock on it. My father was always crying for my mother. She died. They didn't celebrate my birthday. She died on my birthday. He was, always seemed to be disappointed in me and disapproving of me. So how in the world am I going to grasp this concept that God is giving me all access? Yeah. And I was only invited to this conference we, because our son was speaking at the conference. So it was the father-son connection. Mm. So we're given access, not because of us. You know, we have this virtual point system. Do I deserve it today? If I prayed in red, well, maybe. Yeah. But it's not a virtual point. He says, come in, all access. And, um, I, I, you know, having that as association with my father and that stuff, it was so hard for me to believe I had a father. But yet I have kids, and they know where I hide the keys if the door is locked. They come in, they get in bed with us, they take the remote, they take, if they felt yeah. like we didn't want them there, I would feel terrible. Yeah. My kids don't have to come in bringing me gifts. They don't have to come in because of a formal invitation. Mm -hmm. They come in because we're their mom and dad. So good. And God feels like, you're my girl. You're my boy. Yeah. Come on. The door is open. Just get on my lap. You know, and that's, that's the beauty of prayer combined so with good. faith. So good. And, and absent of religion. Absent. Like, oh, it's no religion. It's like, you don't ugh. need a formality, a formal prayer. You don't mm -hmm. need any of that. You know, yeah. that's... That's just so re ridiculous. You know, if we needed formal prayers, then we would ha be Old Testament priest. Yeah. Because they had formality, mm -hmm. you know. And you know what happened when that priest, it was his turn to go in. Imagine the night before, yeah. the torment. <laughs> yes, 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 yeah. Was I good die. to my mother-in-law? <laughs> Did I cross all my T's, dot all my I's? And we, are, we have like an Old Testament mindset, yeah. even though we're New Testament believers. I call the Old Testament the OT, old trauma. We have the old trauma in the New Testament, and we need to get it out and just by faith believe yeah. God. So good. He's such a good, loving such father. A good, that's why it's good news. <laughs> yeah, it's good news. It's good news. It's not bad news. It's, it's not bad news. news. There's nothing bad about it. And nothing that you've ever done. It doesn't matter what it is. If, if you're feeling like, that's why I say when people come to church, I'm like, God drew you here. There's there's no other reason that you're here than He drew you. He wants you. He wants all of you. He wants every bit of you. Absolutely. And and He He's He forgives. He can forgive all of that. All you gotta right. do is just come. Well, to He's him. really technically forgiven it all. Yes. Because all when done. He died on Calvary, every sin that was committed and ever would be committed was totally. He said it's finished. It's finished. I paid the price for every single sin. We have to accept it. Really, the whole world is saved, technically. They just don't know it. Mm -hmm. It's like having the lotto ticket, but you just never check the numbers. Yeah. You won the lotto. Check those but numbers. But if you never <laughs> cash in, yeah. you'll never get what, what was afforded you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, I mean, he says even if you make your bed in hell. Mm -hmm. He's basically saying, I'm sitting on the bed with you. Mm -hmm. He died for every single one of us. He knows the number of hairs on our head. It's, it's mind-boggling it that a holy God would want fellowship with unholy people. Mm -hmm. But see, think about this. God, he's in the people business, right? He created mankind. He took a chance. Mm -hmm. I mean, he knew that Adam and Eve were going to screw it up. <laughs> he yes. made a covering. And then he made another covering. It's the blood. Nothing mm -hmm. but the blood. Mm -hmm. Nothing but the blood. No other fount I know. Not my performance and the blood. It's nothing but the blood. And he, think about it. Before he created man, I mean, God always was, always will be. So he wasn't in heaven going around saying, wow, this is mine, all mine. Streets of gold, pearly gates, <laughs> cattle on a thousand hills. Yeah. By the way, God is not a vegan. He... He loves cattle. He loves beef. <laughs> you know, he, so he wasn't satisfied owning heaven until he had someone to share it with. Mm -hmm. 
He wants to share heaven on earth with you. He wants you to invite him into your problems. He knows already, but he's a gentleman. He's waiting to be invited Mm -hmm. in. And then as we receive his love, what does it say? As freely as you have received, freely give. As you have been comforted, comfort others. There's a flow. And we become dead when we stop the overflow from coming out of us. And then that turns into religion. Mm-hmm. But when there's a love flow, man, yeah. come on. Yeah. We could be loving people every day. And, you know, love is a very selfish act because there's something about giving that does something to you. Yeah. You know, it's, and, and you're just giving the love of God to other mm-hmm. people. And it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Come on. Because when you know how good he is, you, you, want to, you want to please him. You want to glorify him. You want to honor him. You want to. You want to. When you feel judged and condemned, mm-hmm. you run. I mean, people run from that. I think right. it's we want to run to the arms of, of God. And sometimes I think people can hear it, but it never makes it from Has here to your heart. To here, That's which, right. I think there's a book here. I think there's a book there. <laughs> this is your book. This is From Your Head to Your Heart. The change you long for is just 18 inches away, right? Absolutely. So how did you how did you come out with this? Well, I, you know, you've heard so, my testimony, yes. drugs, all of that. I get saved. My outward behavior changes instantly. But what doesn't change immediately is how I feel internally. Because I was told as a child, you don't have a mother because God doesn't think you deserve one. Mm. So everything was you don't deserve. So I always felt like there was a billion miles away between my head and my heart, right? No matter how small you are, tall you are, there's this 18-inch distance. And I always felt that there was sludge between what I believed and what I received. Mm. See, on Sunday, I would hear a sermon, you can do all things through Christ, But then Wednesday would come and I'd be like, can I do all things through Christ? See, as that truth was working its way down into my heart, the heart has memory. And I would feel like that's not for you. You know, in 1991, medical literature discovered that the heart has its own brain. Mm -hmm. The brain in in the head's connected to the brain in the heart. It sends messages to one another, doesn't necessarily agree with one another. That's why we say things like, my mind is telling me one thing, But my heart is saying something else. So we need to go from being a believer to a receiver. Mm -hmm. And we need to get our head, what we believe in our heart, in sync. We need to take God's word. And through a series of events, God does this unbelievable thing for me where I realized that I was loved and accepted by God, that I wasn't the exception to the rule. I was accepted. And you know what? I think the most difficult thing for us is accepting being accepted. Yeah. We got to accept that we're accepted, you know, and that he loves me. And every time the brain in your heart, because of past experiences, kind of puts hands up and says, that's not for you. That's for her. Mm -hmm. That's for those people. That's not for you. That's not for your zip code. Mm -hmm. That's not for your color skin. That's not for this. That's not, oh, and here God is saying, please, let it go from here to here. You know, think about the Israelites. No matter what God did for them, he yeah. parts a sea, turns it into a road. Too hot, no problem. I'll be a, 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 a cloud by day. Too cold, no problem. Be a pillar of fire by night. But no matter what God did for them, every time they ran into another obstacle, they were waiting for the other shoe to drop. Mm. Because they were in slavery 435 years. For 435 years, generation after generation was told, you're the tail, you're not the head. Wow. And then when they go into that first march into the promised land, and they have, they carry fruit Hmm. on their shoulders. It was so big, just like God said, two people carrying it. But they're also carrying around on their shoulders this gigantic sense of fruitlessness. And what they saw with their eyes and what they knew to be true in their head, they couldn't receive it in their heart. Mm -hmm. And I say this, truth be told, the walk to the promised land, it's not horizontal. It's vertical. That's so good. If you conquer this, there's nothing that you can't do for God. 
That's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. And the truth of the matter is, this is the question. Do you believe God really loves yeah. you? Mm-hmm. Do you believe he loves you? That's that so he's good. for you, not against you. That you are who he says you are. Mm-hmm. That you're not an orphan. You've been chosen. He will finish the good work he started in you. Mm-hmm. Perfect love cast out fear. For what does torment have to do with love? Yeah. You didn't choose him. He chose you. you. You only love him because he first loved you. He started the relationship. Let's keep it going by believing him. Mm-hmm. You know, there's two fathers. There's the father of truth. There's the father of lies. Who's going to parent you? Yeah. The father of truth has to parent us. Yeah. Like they say, who's your daddy? Yeah, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? <laughs> well, the father of truth is my daddy. Yeah. Not the father I experienced on earth, nor the father of lies. The father of truth mm-hmm. went through all of that. He gave up his son so he can have more sons and daughters. Yes. I mean, mm. it's mind-boggling. It is. And I love that revelation, too, because I think when people, when you, like you said, you hit an obstacle... He's come through for you time and time and time again because we can be like the Israelites. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, I know he opened the sea or I know he did this miracle in my life, but I'm, maybe maybe um, I've used up all my miracles. You know, maybe Absolutely. he's already, maybe right, right. at this point like in my life. Absolutely, right, Like there's a shortage yeah. or there's a limit. There's <laughs> yes. a cap. There's a cap. Yeah. You, that, you know, uh, uh, Pastor Charla, uh, you've already had 10 miracles. Well, that's it. That's it. <laughs> We're shutting the book. <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> You know, of course yeah. it's not like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just... There's always more. There's, there's always, always, more. always more. And what did they? What did the Israelites always say? Why did you bring us here? Mm-hmm. And they saw the water from the rock. Yeah. Why, Why did you bring us here? So that we'll be victims. Mm-hmm. We make ourselves victims mm-hmm. instead of victors. Oh, another obstacle. Another, another opportunity for God to show... And then what do they say? We seem as grasshoppers Mm -hmm. in our own eyes. And so we were in theirs. So as we see ourselves, that's how we think people see. Mm -hmm. But you know the story. They didn't see them as grasshoppers. Rahab was like, no, the terror of who you guys are has fallen on all of us. Meanwhile, they're seeing themselves as grasshoppers. I did a little study on grasshoppers. And, you know, they travel in large numbers. And they, d- they destroy the earth. Mm. That's terrible. Scientists are baffled why there's grasshoppers. Um, they have the ability to attack, but when they're being attacked, they just freeze. Huh. But this is the kicker. Do you know that flies lay their eggs on the back of the grasshopper, the larva? Mm-mm. And when it hatches, it eats the grasshopper. And that's how it is wow. when the enemy lo- lays his lies on our back and eats us alive. Mm-hmm. And what do we do? Instead of fighting back with the word, yeah. we, we freeze up. So, you know, when you're talking, I was thinking about one thing that I've, that I've seen and I think people can uh, maybe identify with is even the, old, the older that you get, and I've heard a lot of people say this, the older I get... Um, I feel like maybe that God's done with me, and they free. They they freeze. They become like they they have this picture in their mind. Well, I guess you know I'm, I'm you know, over fifty, so right. I guess God doesn't have anything left for me. I'm gonna go retire, play golf, you know, ride around on a on a um, golf cart and just sit back and God doesn't have anything left for me. Mm-mm. But that's what I love about you. You are full of the Holy Spirit. You're full of fire. You're ministering all over the world. And there's nothing like there's, there's, there's no, no limit. limit. And I'm going to be 71 December, you know, ageless. Ageless. And this ageless. Is, you talk about that. And yes. you ageless because it says on the back, did, did, did you know there was a fountain of youth? While our earthly bodies will eventually expire, our spirits never die, and you give nine keys to living a youthful life no matter what your age. So what's the secret? Well, you know, uh, I feel like Caleb. Caleb was in his 80s. He said, give me the hill country. Yes. Give me the hardest place. There's no retirement in God. That's just ridiculous. And I am, you know, saddened when I travel and I see older women that have so much to give. Yeah. And they're saying, where's my place? 
you know what? Maybe next year my place isn't on the platform. Maybe it's a one-on-one -on -one in the kitchen ministering to someone. Who cares? And I have this whole thing about spiritual breastfeeding in my book. Mm -hmm. You know what? Because when you, you're filled with the milk of God's word, mm -hmm. right? So when you breastfeed, an intergenerational relationship is formed, right? Mm -hmm. It's intergenerational. There's the baby and the mother, interdependent. The baby needs what the mother has, yeah. but the mother needs to release what the baby needs. Yes. You have to watch your intake. Having connection with younger people keeps you straight. Mm -hmm. You have to be transparent. You have to be naked to breastfeed. You got it. So, so many people are saying, they might not like mine. They're droopy. <laughs> what yeah. baby says, I don't like my mother's. I wish I had a different one. No. Yeah. They're being comforted at those breasts. And the bottom line is this, if you want to dry up, stop breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And you know what? In the breastfeeding process, you may get mastitis, right? That's an infection in the ducts. What does the doctor say? You have to breastfeed through the pain mm -hmm. because the milk is not affected. The milk is still pure. And if you stop breastfeeding when you have that pain, that mastitis, you get your ducts clog up and it needs surgery. So what happens to us? We get bit. We're yeah. going to get bit. Somebody hurts us. What do we do? Mm -hmm. Button up. Swear off letting anybody near us. But the truth of the matter is, if you want to dry up, stop breastfeeding. And mm -hmm. that's a pain that none of us can bear. Yeah. That none of us, we have so much, listen, intake equals outflow. You know, what did, what did the uh, prophet say to the woman? Uh, she was the prophet's wife. He passed away. And she goes to him. She goes, look, they're going to take my kids. They're mm -hmm. taking my home. And he says to her, what do you have in your house? Yeah. She's expecting him to give her. Son. What do you have in your house? And she was like, well, I only have this little bit of oil. And if you look up the definition, it means... I literally have one anointing of oil left for me. Hmm. That's how many people feel. I just have enough for me. I don't have anything to give out. So what does he tell her to do? He says, go out in the neighborhood and find jars emptier than you. <laughs> yeah. Bring them in your house. Start pouring. So As she good. starts pouring, the oil starts flowing. She replicates what's in her hmm. And when she stops pouring, the oil stops flowing because God doesn't waste his anointing. Yeah. So why is God going to give you something if you're not going to pour it out on someone else? Yeah. So we need to stop with my season is up. Listen, he's the ancient of days. And what does Paul say? The outer man has fading away, but my inward man is being renewed day by day. Mm -hmm. Listen, I have wrinkles. I have uninvited guests on my body that I <laughs> didn't invite to the party. But my inner man, honey, inside, I'm a six-foot runway model. Yes. I am like, yes, Lord, let's do this together. Amen. Well, I'm so glad that you said yes, and I'm so glad that you continue to pour out because you have blessed my life in so many ways for so long. Thank and you. I'm so glad to finally have you here. I'm, I'm just, I, I can't even tell you how grateful I am that you've chosen to say yes and that you continue to sharpen your axe. I mean, you continue, you're full of the Word of God. You're full of the fire of God. And mm -hmm. I'm just so incredibly grateful for you. And I believe there's women, there's some of you that are out there that God has something for you. He wants you yes. to pour out. He wants you to go find those empty vessels. I love of that. When you water others, you yourself will be refreshed. And so thank you for joining us. Thank you for being on the podcast. I know you guys are going to share this. Share it, share it, share it. And share it with somebody that you think might need to hear this. I think everybody needs to hear it. But share, share away. And I'm so glad that you ch chose to tune in and check us out again next month. We'll have another guest on. Be blessed. Thank you for watching.